Hello guys and welcome to another calculus video. In this video we're going to be evaluating these two awesome integrals. They're relatively short integrals, they look very very daunting, but there are cool little tricks that we can use to reduce them into much easier ones. So without any further ado, let's jump straight into the integration. So the first integral we have today is the integral from 0 to 1 of x natural log of 1 plus x plus x to the fourth plus x to the fifth. Now already um, we're also dividing by 1 plus x squared. Already this looks pretty daunting because we have this fourth and fifth powers right here, which is not something that we're used to dealing with because usually much nicer numbers will come out if we use you know second, third powers rather than fourth and fifth. So the trick is to stay calm, look for ways to simplify everything. And one thing that you might have noticed right away is that this natural logarithm can be factored into 1 plus x times 1 plus x to the fourth. So we can go ahead and split up that natural log and get two separate integrals. So we'll have the integral of x natural log of 1 plus x over 1 plus x squared dx plus the integral from 0 to 1 of x natural log 1 plus x to the fourth over 1 plus x squared dx. All right, so now these two integrals are actually pretty tough to evaluate. Um, I tried for a long time using tangent substitutions and different substitutions along the way, but I was never really able to find something that worked for me. Uh, the only thing that really does help right over here is that this is all in terms of x squared, and we have an x right here. So we can sub u equals x squared and make that integral a little bit better. But then I'm going to change the name of the variable back to u, so, or back to x. So we're going to end up with 1 half times the integral from 0 to 1, natural log of 1 plus x squared over 1 plus x dx. And this is actually where the interesting part of this integral shows up because, again, each of these integrals by themselves are very, very difficult to evaluate. And I spent a long time trying to figure out a way to evaluate the separate integrals because I thought that's the way we're intended to do it. But one important thing to keep in mind is um, that you know this is meant to be a solvable problem. I got this off of a website for integrals, right? So I shouldn't have expected to get something so difficult out of that. So the trick here is to actually look in the context of the problem. We were given, we were asked to solve the sum of these two integrals, not to solve them individually. And that actually leads us to see that this x over 1 plus x squared sort of lines over with this natural log of 1 plus x squared. And this natural log of 1 plus x lines up with this 1 plus x right here. So if we do integration by parts on the first integral, letting u, um, we're going to let u equal natural log 1 plus x, and dv equal x over 1 plus x squared dx, then we're going to end up with the integral from, or evaluated at 0 to 1, ln 1 plus x times ln 1 plus x squared, uh, times 1 half, evaluated at 1 and 0, and then we're going to subtract the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 half ln 1 plus x squared over the derivative of um, the natural log 1 plus x, so over 1 plus x dx. And then we're also adding this integral back, and that is the trick to this integral is that it actually comes from integration by parts. So the inter these integrals perfectly cancel with one another, and all we're left with is this quick little evaluation, which after just plugging everything in, we get is equal to ln squared 2 over 2. So moving on to our next integral, we have a very similar situation, something that looks very, very daunting and could work out to be a very difficult integral, but we have some cool tricks that we're able to use in order to evaluate it. So we have square root 2 plus cosine x, and also inside the square root, net, square root, we have 5 plus 4 cosine x. So again, there's lots of different ways to play around with this and try to simplify it, but ultimately the trick comes with noticing a little bit of symmetry inside the problem. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write this as 1 half, or sorry, not 1 half, uh, 2 times the integral from 0 to pi of this same function. And we can do this because cosine x 
takes on the same values from 0 to pi as it does from 0 from pi to 2 pi just in the opposite order and since we have everything in terms of cosine x we're all good to do that and that'll be important later but I'm not going to worry about it right now so the trick here is to notice on the inside of this int of, of this uh, square root that these two functions have a very nice correlation if we take 2 plus cosine x squared and then we subtract square root 5 plus 4 cosine x squared we're going to get 4 plus 4 cosine x plus cosine squared of x minus 5 plus 4 cosine x and notice that this is beautifully going to cancel with this and we're going to end up with cosine squared of x minus 1 which is equal to negative sine squared of x and so the trick here is to multiply on the inside by the conjugate so when we multiply by the conjugate which um, on the inside of the square root we're going to end up getting 2 times the integral from 0 to pi of square root and on the top we're going to have negative sine squared of x um, this has to be a bit so so when we multiply by the conjugate we're going to end up on the top with negative sine squared of x and on the bottom we're going to end up with 2 plus cosine x minus square root 5 plus 4 cosine x and obviously we can't have negatives so uh, the top and bottom are actually both negative right now so we're just going to go ahead and flip those flip this on the bottom here and then flip the sign on the top as well so we have square root 5 plus 4 cosine x minus 2 plus cosine x dx and now we can go ahead and separate these square roots since everything on the inside is obviously going to be positive and on the top we are just going to have sine of x because um, when 0 is less than x is less than pi sine of x um, equals uh, absolute value of sine of x equals sine of x because sine of x is greater than 0 and now we can do u equals cosine x so we have 2 times the integral from negative 1 to 1 of 1 over root root 5 plus 4u minus 2 minus u du so we're just going to let v equal root 5 plus 4u or v squared minus 5 all over 4 equals u du equals that's u uh, v over 2 dv so we'll end up with the integral from 1 to 3 of v over square root v minus 2 minus v squared minus 5 over 4 and in order to simplify this a lot we're just going to multiply by 2 on the top and bottom so integral from 1 to 3 of 2v over root 4v and then once we mess with all the constants we're going to get minus 3 I think right minus 2 plus 5 uh, minus v squared yeah and once we complete the square and everything in the bottom we're going to get the integral from 1 to 3 of 2v over square root 1 minus v minus 2 squared dv and then letting I don't know some other letter I do, will do alpha um, v equal to v minus 2 we'll get the integral from negative 1 to 1 of 2 alpha plus 2 over root 1 minus alpha squared d alpha so first off this part with the alpha right here is going to go to 0 because it's going to be just completely odd over the area that we're talking about right um, since 1 over root, min, uh, root 1 minus alpha squared is an even function and alpha is an odd function so we don't need to worry about that and so we're just going to get 4 times sine inverse of alpha evaluated at 1 and negative 1 which is just going to be equal to 4 pi so 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We had two relatively easy integrals today, though they did have some sneaky little tricks that we needed to know in order to evaluate them. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you would like to leave any suggestions down in the comments, I'm always looking for new video ideas. Or if you uh, want to see more content like this, please just let me know. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.